Hey y'all, Jay Wilson here, your neighborhood friendly technical success manager. I am here for your technical success, but I'm also here because it's day three in coronavirus lockdown mode. And uh, I promised that I would try to do a training video or a response video to a post that I saw in the Domo Dojo, at least one per day. If you're not aware of the Domo Dojo, just start using it. Go go to do, dojo.domo.com. Um, it's our technical community. It's where people go to share ideas and figure out how do I get stuff done in Domo. And it's super cool because sometimes you forget there's other people all over the world who are trying to answer the same questions you are. So it's a resource to leverage. Um, if you like the kind of responses that I give, if you want to see your use case addressed, feel free to ping me at jae.wilson at domo.com, but also, of course, submit your question at the dojo. Niti here asks, is there any way to add a row heading or a blank row to a pivot table? And she shares this example of a screenshot here. And you're looking at this and you're like, this is not a pivot table at all not even close. In fact, it more closely resembles like a PNL or an income statement that you might build in a financial reporting use case. And of course, one of the things that gets challenging is in this case, they have different metrics going across in columns. In a PNL, we're accustomed to seeing the metrics in rows where I have a, a metric like total sales amount, cost amount, profit margin, profit margin percent, labor as a percent of sales, right? Those will be going down in rows. And if you think about the kind of effort it takes to build one of these P&Ls, it's a non-trivial kind of thing because you have like cell references going all over the place. And then basically once you get this section done, you're like, ah, oh, i got to copy, paste it, and do it the same thing again for division two, but just hope you don't mess up your cell references. It's a nightmare. But I'm going to show you guys how to get this done in Domo. No tricks, no customs apps, custom apps, just standard features that you have available to you at your fingertips today right now. If you're not using Domo, get on it. <laughs> get a free sample spun up. It's, I mean, okay, anyway, I'm not selling. So what I did is I created a web form that just has the sample data here. Um, just in this case, I have customers, the state that they belong in, total sale, or sorry, a row for sales, a row for amount cost, and then I added a join column that's going to be a fixed value of one. If you're pulling in your data from Dynamics NAV or NetSuite or whatever your finance system is, you would just do a basic ETL that just adds a column with a fixed value of one at the end of it. Now, of course, if I had data like this, I can, you know, sure, I can build a, a basic card that uh, would look something like, I want to get these to swap sides here. Yeah, you know, you could build a card that looks something like this, where you have uh, sales and costs going across on different axes, but what what I would like to do is have one row called sales, a second row called cost, a third row called profit, and then the calculation happening in the same column. That's what I want to happen. Now, how do we get there? So what I did is I created another web form of data that I'm going to call my metrics data set. And in this metrics data set, you are going to define the different names of the metrics that you want to see, because this is going to be one of the axes in your uh, visualization that we're about to make. So in my case, I've got sales, cost, profit margin, profit margin percent, and I'll group them into categories, sales, cost, and profit. And you know what? Maybe just for grins, I'm going to add something like labor adjustment. Um, which I want lumped under cost. And I'm going to I'm going to define labor adjustment as like labor adjustment is 10% of sales or something like this. All right. Now, what are we doing next? The next thing we have to do um, is I have to join my metrics data to my sample data. 
my metrics data has five rows, not four rows. I just changed it. My metrics data has five rows. My sample data has 12 rows, five times 12. I expect the output data set to be 60 rows. And, and actually, you can see right here, my fusion is already doing the job. Let's jump into my fusion. In my fusion, again, my sample data, 12 rows. Metrics data has six, five rows. I do a join on the join column, and in both cases, the join column is one for every single row. My SQL developers, hopefully you're thinking, ah, you've done a Cartesian product. You've multiplied every row in this data set times that data set. My SQL developers also might call this a cross apply or a cross join or wrong. <laughs> Usually you don't want to create a Cartesian product, but this time we actually do. What that looks like is for, uh, for customer A, if I sort by sales amount, I've got 92 duplicated now five times, and that is intentional because I want to have one row for each metric. I want my transaction data duplicated for each metric. Let's build a card off the back of this. So I can put metric on the axis. I can drop in my total sales here. And I can drop in total cost. Now, if you watched my video from yesterday, I said one of the things you want to do is you want to be able to articulate what is happening and what is the difference between what is happening versus what you want to happen. I have metrics on the axis. Now, what is correct? 839 is the right number on the row for sales. But if I'm on a row where the metric equals cost, I want the value 723. If I'm on the row profit margin, I want sales minus cost. And for labor, I said labor was going to be 10% of sales. You'll notice the emphatic use of if. Hopefully by now, when I say if, you say case statement. We're going to solve this problem with a case statement. I'm just going to give this a stupid name, and we're going to do a case statement that says every case statement ends with an end. When metric equals sales, then give me the sum of sales amount. Let's just start with that. Oh, I hope I used good syntax. I actually didn't check closely enough. Ha! When metric equals sales, then give me the sum of sales amount. Now, when metric equals cost, then give me the sum of cost amount. Boom! It is beautiful. I can start dropping these columns because this is about to be my final report. Let's just finish this out um, and then and then we'll be done. So, good lord. When metric equals profit margin, then. Oh, Jay, what are you typing? Take the sum of sales amount minus the sum of cost amount. Good. When, mar when it's equal to profit margin percent, then sum of sales minus sum of cost divided by sum of cost. And lastly, when metric equals, what was the last one? Wasn't it like labor? I should look it up. 
uh, I can't remember how I spelled it, but we'll take these, uh, we said we were going to make this 10% of cost amount, or sale amount. Where is my spelling mistake? Here. The correct spelling for labor was labor ADJ. Let's just see if this passes the sanity check. Labor adjustment, is it 84, 10% of it? Yes, it sure is. We're done. We are done. I can put in my metric category. Uh, maybe I should sort by the metric category as well. Okay, so now, ah, oh, that's ugly. Sales, cost, profit, and all that are out of order. Hmm, how will I solve that? Um, yeah, let me, let me fix this sort order problem. I could do it in a beast mode, but, um, I try to balance what I do in beast mode versus what I do in my data. So what I'll do here is in my metrics web form, I'm going to define the sort order that I want to see. So for example, let me add a column called, uh, category sort and I want sales then cost then profit then profit margin percent and then yeah I'll put this under uh, I'll put that under the cost section you know what's really cool? I built this using a fusion, right? So theoretically, I should have an instantaneous update in my pivot table. Sorry, in the card that I just built. It should just automatically change because um, I used a fusion. This is the wrong card. Oh no, I did this a couple times and I didn't name my cards well. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. And the only way to know is because labor adjustment is a thing that I changed in my demo. Huh. There we go. So now I put in my sort column. Oh yeah. Why isn't it recognizing my new sort column? Well, Jay, when you create a fusion, um, your fusion will not recognize changes to your schema until you tell it to. So if I, because I added this new column called category sort, I have to just toggle between um, fusion type add rows to add columns to force um, domo to recognize the changes in this table and the addition of the new column otherwise it won't do it if you add new rows to the data that's not a schema change so if you add new rows that won't have any impact okay now when I go back into analyzer I should have the new sort order column here it is I'm gonna sort by no aggregation Ascending, if you please. Sales, cost, cost adjustment, profit, profit margin, percent. It is beautiful. Now, hopefully you're excited, but just in case you're not, uh, spoiler alert, um, we can turn this into a pivot table now. We can do something you can't do in Excel. <laughs> um, and I can, for example, put my state on the columns axis. So now I can see my sales performance, la la la, across different states. 
more likely you would want it on um, the rows axis. So now I can see, okay, how am I doing in Hawaii versus how am I doing in Oregon? That's pretty sweet. Um, and then if I wanted to do, for example, if this was a much longer set of data, and I, you know what, I just want to do a cost analysis and focus in on cost. Now I can just look at the set of metrics about cost. So that takes us to the end of the training bit. Needy, I hope this is valuable for you. Again, the only trick that I pulled out was um, we created a web form that had all of my metrics data in it. We had a fi added a fixed value of one to every row in the transactions data and the metrics data so that we could use a fusion to cross apply them. Then I built a beast mode that basically says, when I'm looking at the row, the metric row called sales, do this calculation. When I'm using, looking at profit margin, do that calculation, and so on. This model will work reasonably well. I've, done, I've implemented it for a really large restaurant, uh, global restaurant, um, and it, it, brought, it was successful there. So it will work on like multi-million row data sets. Um, with this fusion model. And then what I really like about this is that it keeps all of the math in one place. When you get to the point when you say, hey, um, I'm building out my metrics, I'm not doing cell references. All I have to, all I have to do is maintain this bit of code here. I appreciate that if you can't read SQL, this might seem daunting. And if you have many, 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 many metrics, this can be difficult. Um, but there was even further tuning that we did um, to their implementation so that at the end of the day, the user actually wasn't managing any SQL whatsoever. They were just adding a web form. That's the end of that. My name's Jay Wilson. You can reach out to me at jae.wilson at domo.com. Uh, I'm a technical success manager. I am here for your success. So uh, let us know how we can help you. Catch you later. Bye.